Well, hey guys, it's the Coaster, and I'm coming at you with another, uh, I guess, technical explanation video about maybe something you've noticed when you've been playing this game. Uh, if you're a pilot or love aviation, you may already know what this is, so this video is not for you. But for those of you wondering, why does my airspeed tape and my Mach number don't align when I'm down low versus when I'm up high? And what I mean by that is, I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate right now that if I do Mach 1 relatively low here at the deck, right? Mach 1 is about 640 knots of calibrated or indicated airspeed. 640 knots. But, if I punch it, <clears throat> and I'm doing this in the F-16 because it has all the performance I need. So I'm gonna get up nice and high. We'll get up to about probably 30 or even 40,000 feet just to make the discrepancy as high as possible. But you can already see my Mach number is 0.95 and the airspeed is dropping 450, 440, 430. And my Mach number really isn't decreasing all that much. But what gives? Well, first let's get a clean comparison. So let me get up to about 30, 40,000 feet. Let me get up to Mach 1, and we'll see what the uh, indicated airspeed, or calibrated airspeed in this case is. And let's talk about it, alright? So here we are, we're at 32,000 feet. I'm going to go ahead and put the nose over and accelerate to Mach 1. So remember, 640 knots at roughly sea level. Here we are at 35,000 feet, Mach 0.99, Mach 1, and we are 350 knots. So a full 300 knots slower than at sea level. So why is that? Go ahead and pull the throttles back so I don't burn all of our fuel. Well, how, there's three different airspeeds in uh, aviation. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about them in order of like what I think is like the easiest to understand to I guess the least understood and the easiest one to understand is my airspeed across the ground so as I look down at the ground I'm obviously moving relative to it airspeed across the ground is how fast you're going across the ground it's as simple as it gets right you as a as a commercial traveler this is the one you care about because this is what gets you from point a to point b in a certain amount of time the faster you go across the ground the faster you get to your destination not a whole lot to talk about there the next airspeed is my true airspeed and i'll be honest with you i don't know if the f-16 actually has a true airspeed indicator not one that i know of um, be really cool if it did. Looking around here, it does not. But anyways, true airspeed is exactly what it sounds like. It's your actual speed through the air. And in a perfect world, your ground speed and your true airspeed would always be the same. But we don't live in a perfect world. Uh, we live on planet Earth that has an atmosphere, and that atmosphere likes to have winds aloft. So, depending on your headwinds or your tailwind situation, even though your true airspeed is, say, reading 300 knots, but you have a 50 knot headwind, you'll only be going 250 knots across the ground. Vice versa, if you have a 50 knot tailwind and you're doing 300 knots of true airspeed, you'll be doing 350 knots across the ground. This is why you hear the saying, blue skies and tailwinds, because tailwinds help you get to your destination faster. And there's some pretty cool accounts of even commercial aircraft 
that are traveling at Mach 0.88, you know, 0.9, just below the speed of sound, but they're up in the jet stream, and the jet stream is booking 140, 150 miles an hour, and they're flying with it, and they're actually going faster than the speed of sound across the ground, but they are not traveling through the air faster than the speed of sound. And I, I know there's at least one case of it. I'm sure there's multiple of it, but that's a pretty cool factor. But that still doesn't answer the question is, what is this airspeed right here to the left of my HUD? Well, that's indicated airspeed. And indicated airspeed is received uh, or generated by using what's called a pitot tube, which is basically a tube with a little hole in it and it's pointed into the wind stream and that wind pushes inside of the pitot tube and basically causes ram air pressure, blah, 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 a bunch of technical crap. Uh, and as far as this uh, airspeed indicator uh, down here, uh, pushes on a bunch of like levers and springs and stuff, which moves the needle, yada, yada, yada. That's a fine and dandy explanation because that's exactly how it does work but I don't think it gets the point across about what's actually happening. So we're gonna think of a thought experiment, all right? So as we all know, air pressure decreases, right? Air density decreases as you go from sea level all the way up here at 28,000 feet. Pretty intuitive, right? So the air is basically really thin up here versus down there, I'm sure you are already starting to put the pieces together in your head, but hang with me. So let's get out of a fighter jet real fast and let's think of yourself as in a car. And you're doing 100 miles an hour at sea level, just on a highway, and you stick your hand out the window with the palm facing the airstream. You're gonna feel a certain amount of resistance, right? Air resistance, it's drag against your hand. And it's gonna feel like you're going 100 miles an hour. But now let's say you could build a highway up here at 30,000 feet and your car went 100 miles an hour of true airspeed and you stick your hand out the window, palm facing into the wind. Because the air is less dense up here, it is not going to feel like you are going 100 miles an hour. In fact, up here at 30,000 feet, it might only feel like you're going 50 miles an hour. Well, that pressure on your hand that you feel, that's your indicated airspeed. It's just what it feels like. So in order to actually feel like you're going uh, 100 miles an hour, you actually have to increase your speed to 200 miles an hour of true airspeed in order for it to feel like you were going 100 miles an hour down at sea level. This is that discrepancy that you're seeing up here between your or your indicated airspeed in your Mach number. So, if I actually do 650 knots, I don't even know if I can actually get to it. I wonder if I can, can I drop all my bombs? Yeah. Let's get real fast. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and speed up. So, it was like 640, 650 knots, something like that. Let's see what our Mach number is up here at about 30,000 feet. And this should explain a lot. This should explain the discrepancy between the speeds. So now we're at 420, 430. May not have enough uh, fuel to demonstrate this for you. Yeah, screw it. Remember, it was 640 knots at Mach 1. I'm gonna go ahead and dive. We're gonna go 640. There's 550, we're Mach 1.3. And there's 640 knots right there. And we're Mach 1.4 at 22,000 feet. Go pull back the throttle. So we gained almost half the speed of sound just by going up to 22,000 feet. And again, that is just based on the RAM air pressure. And um, if this is all you're looking for, there you go. That's the answer. That's why your airspeed reads differently in, uh, from your Mach based on if you're at sea level versus up high. 
But now if you want to know the reason why pilots and aviation uses this, uh, this indicated airspeed, uh, so go ahead and stick around because this is pretty cool. So again, it's based on the pressure. So think of your hand out the window. It's based on a certain amount of pressure. The gear, landing gear in the F-16 is designed for 300 knots of airspeed. Well, that's 300 knots of indicated airspeed. So at sea level, indicated and true airspeed are basically the same. Uh, they're, they're identical, actually. That's kind of the point, right? So what it's not, what it's actually saying is, is the F-16's landing gear is only capable of withstanding 300 knots of true airspeed at sea level, or equivalent 300 knots at sea level. So if you're actually up at 40,000 feet and you want to put your gear down, you can actually go much faster through the air, your true airspeed, as long as your indicated airspeed is 300 knots. So what does this mean? It means you don't have to remember different airspeeds for your gear or for your flaps. Or if you fly Cessnas or even, you know, Beechcraft or whatever, you don't have to remember different stall speeds just because you're at different altitudes. Indicated airspeed makes it the same across the board and ultimately it makes flying airplanes way easier. Um, there's a lot more I probably could dive into on this, uh, but yeah, just understand that it, uh, it simplifies everything. It just makes it to where I have to remember one speed, 300 knots, and I can put my gear down. Uh, you know, or my flaps, or whatever it is, and this is goes for all airplanes. So, uh, yeah, guys, I I don't have much more to say about it. If you learned something, uh, please like, uh, comment, and subscribe. Uh, and if you still have questions or you have other uh, bits of information you'd like to share down below, uh, please do. Because uh, as fun as this game is to just go around and blast people out of the sky, also it's a simulator. And you can actually learn a lot about real world, real world physics and uh, kind of how things work. So, um, yeah, guys, uh, hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya. This game is, that looks photorealistic. That, this doesn't look like I'm uh, looking through a VR headset. This looks very much real. Hmm. Outstanding.